trying to get the Corvette set up for E85. <clears throat> so I've got it jacked up. And for whatever reason, the computer is behind the fender. Um, and I remembered whenever I was putting the turbo kit in, these charge pipes actually interfered with my computer. So if you go back and look, I actually had to uh, change how the computer was in the car. But either way, all I had to do is take off that little splash guard. Okay, a couple push pins, a couple 10 millimeter bolts, and there's my computer. Um, and I actually don't know, I, I, I know it's pin 40, and I know which one pin 40 is, but I don't know which one of these connectors is actually the, the one that I need to do. So I've got the uh, battery disconnected, positive and negative, just in case. And I'm going to pop off those uh, harnesses, take them apart so that I can pin in my flex fuel sensor so I've ordered the connectors and it came with four of these three for this connector one for the um, ECU and then here's my flex fuel sensor so that goes in there and then I've got to give that 12 volts ground and then output to the PCM Thank goodness the actual connector colors are different <clears throat> and their pinouts are different. Um, I know this is the one that has pin 40 because I, I'll put up some pictures here. I found some pictures where basically that was the distinction and you count over from that. This gray one, I don't know what that is, but that one's definitely the one that you put pin 40 on. And it was the bottom connector on my particular E38. So there's a gray connector and a black connector. It's the black connector. So it took me a minute to figure out how to get the wire through there. Um, so there's a uh, like a little retainer right there. And you can see I kind of broke off a few pieces before I thought about this. Um, so that retainer is actually smaller. The hole is smaller than this connector. So what I had to do was first, there's a plastic pin that's blocking the hole. So I had to take my little de-pinning tool that I made and break out the piece of plastic that way, which gave me a free hole. And then you can actually see the light of day back here through this rat's nest. Then you have to push the wire through here first and then crimp it. The trouble is my wire was just, I mean, very, very tight fit through that little um, retainer thing. So I actually had to strip off a whole bunch of the coating to get it through there. And then I could grab this and pull it through with a pair of pliers. So now I'm going to crimp on my connector and pull it back through and so it pops in place. So I got my wire pinned in there, and I basically just zip tied it to the existing harness and ran it up through basically where the existing harness is. It comes out right there, goes back behind the exhaust manifold, and I'm going to zip tie it to the factory harness so that it doesn't melt. Um, then over here... I've got it in the return line so that it doesn't affect fuel flow and also it's like an instant reading. This is exactly what content the engine is actually seeing. So I just put it in there. It's actually just kind of free floating because this uh, it's actually not touching anything. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I want to zip tie it down or not but this hose is so strong and it's so short. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it there. So the three wires that you need, so this is actually, the one right here is actually my signal wire. So that one is signal, one right here is ground, and this one is 12 volt. So the signal wire, it comes from back there, and then I put it in the loom for the alternator battery wire. 
and then it pops out right there it goes into my sensor wire and then this is the 12 volt supply and I wrapped it in the loom right there and I'm actually taking uh, 12 volts from the oxygen sensor so I checked it that's actually um, only hot whenever the engine is hot so and it, it's got uh, full voltage and I'm that's the only thing I could think of that's not a critical sensor because this is going to draw some amount of current I just don't know how much it shouldn't be a whole lot but if my oxygen sensor gets fried because I tapped off of it, no big deal. <clears throat> I don't really want to tap off of my coils because those are sort of critical for the engine to work properly. Um, and then that one is really close by. So I just routed it up there through there and it pops out right there. Ground wire goes back there, down there, and it goes over here to this factory ground location. Um, and I put a ring terminal, a weather pack shrink tube ring terminal on it. Um, and I just plugged it up. Uh, first, I checked to make sure the engine still worked, that I didn't fry my computer. That was good. Made sure I had all my pins correct. And I fired it up. Lo and behold, worked flawlessly. And the gas station that I typically go to says that it's 10%. So it was fluctuating between 10 and 11% um, ethanol content. So it's working beautifully right now. I let it run for about a minute, revved it up. Everything is great. So now on to, um, I'm gonna finish wrapping that, uh, the sensor wires. I'm gonna wrap that right there with electrical tape um, just to make it look real clean. Um, and there we go. My car is officially ready for flex fuel. So I got everything tidied up. I got all my tape wrapped around there. I tucked the wire in, but then I decided to put some loom over it and the loom goes back there and over there as well. Um, and then this is what I decided to do with my fuel pressure sensor. Um, I just took one of the plugs that I had and drilled and tapped a eight by something, eighth by 27 NPT. Um, and it don't leak or anything. Um, the way I had the sensor originally, it was actually um, touching this um, cover. So I just rotated it around a little bit um, and now it clears everything just fine. And so it's good and solid. No troubles, everything looks good, no leaks. Sensor's working flawlessly. So I've gone down to the gas station and I'm at uh, right around 14 gallons of gas and I decided I want to see if this sensor is working so I put one gallon of E85 but it says on the pump says on the pump up there 70% um, ethanol so they're selling it as E85 but it says 70% ethanol so I just kinda want to see what my content sensor is gonna do remember it's right after the rail sweet it looks like it's working for sure so I went from like 10.6 10.8 to around 18 percent the next thing I've got my tune set where's my tune so my tune is set so that at 15 percent it starts doing stuff what stuff? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to learn as, it, as I go. So, um, we'll see how this goes. So, it's been a few days since I've added ethanol to the car. I guess about a half a tank or so. I can't remember, like six gallons. Um, and it settled down at 36.5% ethanol, and that's where it stayed for the past couple days. Um, and uh, I'm at eight gallons, roughly, and it holds 16 so I just filled it up again with 11.1 .1 more gallons of E70. So I'm gonna start it for the first time and see where it goes. Oh, I guess I have to hit record on the scanner. That would make sense. 
see where we're at. So I'm not too hopeful that it's going to stay at 62%. It's probably going to go down because it typically does go down. Um, because there was eight gallons of a mixture in there. I'm just hoping to get up to 70% before I make it to the dyno. Um, so, commanded. I started doing everything in Lambda because it just makes it easier. Um, and I started doing everything in KPA because it makes it easier. Um, so, I don't think I have commanded AFR on here. Did I log? I've because Lambda is Lambda no matter what fuel you're using. So whenever you're using a blend, it's like impossible to figure out exactly which one you need. Um, but I don't have commanded AFR on there. But should be commanding something like 9 to 1 right now. Yeah, you can see the ethanol percentage just dropped a little bit. Um, so anyway, doing good.